The views and opinions expressed here on Wrestling Wind Down are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any other agency, organization, employer, or company. What's up, guys? It's Lo, and you are tuned in to Wrestling Wind Down, a female founded and hosted podcast dedicated to professional wrestling and our favorite adult beverage. I am always so proud to see individuals within our wrestling community creating new and exciting experiences and activations for fans to attend and enjoy. On this episode, I am joined by Danielle Sullivan of Pretty Heels. Danielle is the lead organizer behind Black WrestleFest, an upcoming event taking over Brooklyn, New York for Juneteenth weekend. We will be spilling the wine on Danielle's inspiration to create Black WrestleFest, what fans and attendants can expect, her team that has helped her to reach the finish line for this event and much more so grab your glass of wine we're going in for the three count juneteenth is right around the corner and i have danielle sullivan here from pretty heels thank you for joining me on wrestling wine down how are you i'm hanging in there thank you for having me this is actually uh, an honor i don't do many interviews <laughs> okay we got the exclusive here <laughs> <laughs> Along with being the COO of Pretty Hills, you are the lead organizer of Black WrestleFest 2022, which is taking over Brooklyn, New York on Juneteenth weekend. What prompted you to create this event? Uh, me and my business partners, we've been wrestling fans literally over 35 years. We're huge fans and we, you know, we met each other through wrestling and we go to conventions and wrestling events. They've actually been international to wrestling events. I've been, you know, afforded the opportunity just to do it domestically. And I was like, we go to these events and they're great, right? I appreciate them and we have a good time, but I don't see much of me at the event, right? So we have the nostalgic wrestlers, great wrestlers, the legends, right? We have Jazz, we have Jacqueline, we have uh, the Godfather, Papa Shango, you know, for whatever you want to <laughs> refer to him as. You have Ron Simmons, you have Teddy Long, you have all the great who are of color, um, but I, I don't see anyone else. Right. And when those people are there, they're usually all those names I named are not usually there together. They, this has been a compilation, you know, so I'm like, why are we not here? And I can't really answer that. Right. Because I don't know everyone else reason. But I, what I do know is I'd love to be at an event where there is, I guess we'll use the buzzwords that are trending now is more inclusivity, more diverse, you know, more people, more relative, you know, more representation. So I said, instead of sitting back and complaining, you know, I've, for my entire life and all the industries I've been in, I've been a doer. I said, so why are we waiting to see this? Why not make it happen? And that's how Black WrestleFest came about. When do you think you formed the idea where you just said, you know what, I'm not just going to watch this happen. I want to do it myself. When did you have that aha moment? I'd say the aha, like the get up and go aha moment was July of 2021. But I think the, I would say the real sparking right of the match would have to be wrestle k 2020 it's the weekend of after thanksgiving in winston-salem north carolina and it's the weekend of nostalgic wrestling fandom that type of experience they do have shows that do showcase the wrestlers that are wrestling now of today's generation but they also do have like i think two cold wrestled and of course rock and roll express is still going so they wrestled but it was there it was i've been going for a few years now and like i said it was people who were there i'm super appreciative of no matter what color what their orientation or anything i'm appreciative of everyone who attends but i would love to see more attendees look like me i would love to see more wrestlers more talent look like me and that was the beginning right was at wrestlecade and then it was like july i kind of was just I think I came, I don't remember what exactly event I had came back from. I don't know what it was. It was an event or something. And I was like, no, it's got to happen. And it was July of 2021 where I was like, yeah, something's got to give. Take me through how the process has been from forming that idea that you wanted to create this wrestling festival based around Black wrestlers, icons, legends to putting it together and now you're almost to the finish line so i brought it up to my business partners 
and they were pretty much on board. You know, two of us live here in New York, so it was a little easier for us to communicate and meet, link up and do things. I shopped it to a few of my friends who are actual WWE superstars. They were on board. They thought it was a good idea. They had, you know, a little, not pushback, but they had constructive feedback, which I took into consideration. I have quite a few friends who were on the independent scene who are kind of like well-known wrestlers, right? And they were like, that sounds dope. Like everybody thought it sounded great. And I appreciated that feedback. And then from there, it was like, I really, like I said, I really just kind of reached out to individuals who I've been fortunate to be in this side of the industry to have a lot of friends who've partaken on the back end of these events. So WrestleCon, WrestleCade, the big event, which usually happens here in New York. Um, They've been a part of a couple of fests up and down the Eastern Seaboard. They've been involved in some things on the West Coast. So I kind of leaned on them for um, logistical advice, spaces to look out for, um, things to make sure that the spaces have, you know, what to go about, what to include. And then along with that, I wanted to be a little innovative. So the conferences that I've been to, they've had exhibits, or the conventions rather, they've had exhibits. I wanted this situation to be more interactive. And I think what sets my situation apart from those that I've mentioned, the other conventions, is that we're going to do game shows and we're going to have wrestlers and fans team up at a game show. So if you haven't read uh, my blurbs or document that's going around that I'm sharing with people, we're doing Wrestling Wheel of Fortune, (laughs) you know, which is different. We're doing Wrestling Jeopardy, right? And we're doing Black Wrestling Family Feud. So these are things where you won't stand on the opposite side of wrestlers, right? I want you to have a big swole on your team, right? I want you to have MJ Jenkins on your team. I want you to have Montana Black. Montana Black is actually the host of Family Feud. Faye Jackson will be Vanna Black of Wheel of Fortune. You know <laughs> I love saying? it. So, you know, it's great to do meet and greets, right? It's great to get your picture, pay for some eight by tens. I'm all about that. I literally have three bins in this corner full of wrestling paraphernalia. But how great of an experience would it be for you to have solved the puzzle, right? <laughs> for Wrestling Wheel of Fortune and Faye was the one like turning the letters. Like who tells that story? How do you, like what would you pay for that? You know what I'm saying? So we have that. And that's what's going to set us apart from a WrestleCon, you know, from a WrestleCade. We're doing in-ring experiences. I actually got that from the Jericho cruise I've been on. He's ran three cruises as of late and I've been fortunate enough to have gone on all three courtesy of payment plans, right? (laughs) And what I love that he did is he has what is called an in-ring experience. So there's a ring. It's not an official ring because you you better not run those ropes because you would die. (laughs) You get in the ring and he he has props. He'll have one of his jackets, you know, that he wore uh, down the ramp at a, uh, in an entrance way. He'll have um, the list that he held when um, he and KO were kind of doing the tag team thing. So there's a couple of props that are there and then you can, they'll have a professional photographer come and take your picture. Mm. So it's an in-ring experience. Um, you can either do it by yourself. Usually I do it with my, with the pretty heels. So, you know, that type of experience you'll also get, you'll be privy to at Black Wrestle Fest. Uh, one of my closest friends is Zuka King and he, he's holding three belts, I believe, two or three belts. He's very big in the Carolinas in the south, uh, eastern south part of the country. And you'll get to either, you know, do, you if you want to run the ropes, like he'll run the ropes with you. If you want to take a picture doing a lockup with him, he'll do it with you. Or if you want to just, you know, hold his belts and take a picture. So you get that in-ring experience. And he's a big heel. So that part is interesting as well, because he's probably going to be throwing some jabs and insults and stuff out there doing his heel thing that he does best. But I wanted to provide that fan experience, not just you standing on one side of the table and the talents on the other side. I wanted you to actually be able to interact, you know, have a, a picture opportunity, you know, doing a lockup with an actual wrestler, an actual champ. So I wanted to like, you know, and I don't mean to brag, but I guess I've been privy to those experiences because my friends are wrestlers and I'm fortunate to say that trying to be selfish about it, right? I want anyone else who wants to attend, right? I want smaller fans to have that experience. I want maybe older fans to have that experience. And I, I just wanted to share that like wealth, right? That I have with everyone else. And that's really the real meat and potatoes that sets us apart from other events. I mean, that's just a few of the things to look forward to. Juneteenth weekend, the Black Wrestling Festival. Who are some of the individuals alongside your business partners who have helped to make this planning of the event a success so far? I will say um, the wrestling is being provided by Battle Club Pro, which is one of the many wrestling promotions here in New York. The owner, Joaquin Morales, I mean, he's always been an amazing individual. Even from, I've been attending Battle Club Pro shows now for about three and a half, four years. And he's, even when I was just an attendee, I mean, he's he's just humble. Like at one point I didn't know he was the owner. So I got to know him. So he's provided 
brought in a wrestling component and we had to work really closely together. Even though I told him, you know, the, the Pretty Hills, we didn't want to deal with the wrestling component because that's what they do best. And at this event, I literally, because it's been a lot of work, I'm all about working smarter, not harder. And if this is what he does best and this is what he's been doing, I'm not going to chime in or, you know, throw a monkey wrench in that. So um, he he still, with that in mind, with that understanding that we have, he consults with me on everything. And he's like, hey, this is what we're thinking about doing. What are your thoughts? You know, and I'm honored, right? It's my small little, you know, input matters. So he's been amazing. You know, from HR, she's a part of Job and Tears podcast. She's a very close friend of mine. It's funny because when I first brought the idea to her attention, she was en route on a trip or something. And she's like, what? Like, we can't talk about this right now. You hit me in the head with like a big boulder. Like, I can't do this. But she was very like, oh, wait a minute, hold up. It's a lot coming on. But she's literally been my right arm throughout this entire situation. And I can't absolutely, even though, you know, you said aside from my business partners, I can't not mention my sister, the CEO of Pretty Heels, uh, Ebony Green. She has been super instrumental in all of this. I literally called her and I think she was on her way to California. And I mean, I think they had just landed her, her and her husband and she was like in the rental car and I'm like, Black WrestleFest. She's like, wait a minute, just trademarked it. I'm like, wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't explain anything. <laughs> so, you know, those three people, honestly, um, I've had crying days, bad days of defeat. Um, they've been there. We've had days of triumph. They've been there, right? I've had days of appointment where we had, we were really high on something happening and, you know, it kind of fell through. They've been there. So those three people has been there ridiculously. I'm talking about daily. I haven't gone a day since probably December without speaking to them about this event. And I, I'm forever indebted and thankful for their, their ears, <laughs> their shoulders. I want to ask you about the reception that you've received via social media. So a lot of people, when they have these big ideas, they think about it for a long time. They think about what will the public think? What will wrestlers think? What will my audience think? Were you expecting the reception that you've received via social media from people? Has it been better? Has it been worse? What have your thoughts been about introducing it to social media and seeing how people have reacted to it? The decision was made back in December to announce social media, not announce it on social media, uh, Martin Luther King weekend. And when I did that, I had been in talks with several of my wrestling friends, you know, for quite some time. And they were like, I'm like, I'm pulling the trigger MLK weekend. And they're like, go for it. So I did it. And the uh, reception was great, actually. I felt it was authentic. You know what I'm saying? I am appreciative of it. One thing I, I wish would have came more from it, right? Because there's always a, but <laughs> I wish I could have gotten bigger planning, right? People don't want insights. People don't want suggestions. They don't want to be collaborative. They want to just tell you, this is my idea. I'm going with it. And that's it. And they just want you to listen. I didn't want that. I wanted this announcement and I wanted the ideas to flow, but that's one thing that didn't happen. Mm. Um, I'm not, you know, upset about it because I did have my own ideas, but I will say the ideas did start rolling in. You know, people did give feedback. It's been pretty positive. I ha I literally haven't received anything negative. Um, a lot of it's been constructive. Not majority of it. I would say probably like a fourth of it has been constructive feedback, criticisms. You know, out of love, not like oh that's stupid. Da, 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 da. But I'm grateful for the reception. I know that a lot of people were responsive because a lot of my wrestling following are wrestlers. So they're like, oh, I want to be on the show. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like. If we could, right, have the budget to book every single wrestler, we would. Um, if we did have the timing, right, people fail to realize, say, 15, 16 wrestlers on a show, right, that can be a three-hour show, right? So, and 16 doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot. Um, and then you have to make sure that the matches make sense and the wrestling psychology is there. So I got more of that. Oh, my God, that idea is great. Let me be on the show. Right. And I'm like, that's cool and all. And like I said, I didn't really have, I didn't want control of the wrestling component. So there was that. But I'm like, I wanted people like Faye Jackson, who's a really good friend of mine, who I, I super love. You know, I told her about the game shows and she's like, I'll be man of black. Like, I wanted more of that. I wanted to have more people, more of my wrestling friends who were more apt to participating in the interactive components, right? Because obviously, you know, you wrestle, right? <laughs> you know, but I would have loved more of that. But I mean, those who did jump on board there, they've got assignments <laughs> and that they'll be working the event. And I'm grateful for their input. I'm grateful for their, their volunteerism, grateful for them stepping up. Some of them are doing double duty because they are wrestling, you know, <laughs> going back to the origin of the conversation, the social media feedback 
was pretty well received, but more so the support was, you know, this is great. I want to be a part of it. And usually the majority of the ask was to be on the wrestling show. Right. What has been the most gratifying experience about organizing this event so far? The most gratifying experience would be that I got to really, like, I have my wrestling friends, and I call them wrestling friends just because that's the origin of how we became friends, but they're not really my wrestling friends because we don't even talk about wrestling, like, when we're together. But, um, I think the most gratifying experience would be really tapping into the, that outer creativity that exists. So like, um, for instance, I'll give you a specific example. Montana Black, I think he's now going as Ray Hahn into tennis. And um, he wrestles out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, but he'll, he's, wrestles, he's wrestled all over the country. He's hosting Black Wrestling Family Feud, right? So it's like, you know, the, the premise of Family Feud, they take surveys and then the two teams have to figure out, you know, where the, their answer lies on the survey. I'm like, well, we have to come up with the questions for the survey. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's you know where we had to really tap into like how do we step outside of ourselves and ask these questions and like and then of course that spawned the conversation of like what type of answers will we get? how do we answer you know and then it was like well how will we solicit these surveys what I did was I, I went to a wrestling show went to two wrestling shows over the weekend there's a ton of wrestling up north now that the world's like opening back up Ray Han's idea was to print the papers out have mm. people fill out the surveys by hand because mm -hmm. sometimes you can give someone a link and they can forget and not fill it out but at least I've got you in front of me you know you fill it out so I did that I bought some small pencils and pens had people fill it out they gave it back to me during the intermission and I actually blog all of those uh you know put the survey in essence and come out with outcomes and then get that ready for the game so that's been gratifying right so these are my wrestling friends who you would think is just just want to wrestle on the show no we really did like intensive research and thought processes and trying to make sure that we have legitimate survey responses. That was gratifying because one, you know, we're just, it's something fun to do and strengthen our friendship. Two, it really shows how creative we really are because I think one of the questions is like top wrestling moments of, of the Attitude Era, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So we're like, hmm, you know, and it forces <laughs> you to think. Right. Um, and the funny part about that specific question is three of my friends said it three different ways. And we had to come up with the best way so that we didn't hurt people's brains with trying to think about it. Right. Because one of my friends said 21st century. Right. Mm. <laughs> and one friend was like the 2000s. Right. And then we all just decided attitude era was kind of like the easiest to kind of like just turn it on and think. So it was that part. Right. It was the collaborative effort. It was the stepping outside of just talking about wrestling matches and botches and stuff, right? Or booking. It was just the laughter that went about, you know, because I think one of the questions, I don't think it made the cut, but it was, who wore the best crimson mask? And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those type of things, like, you know, and then obviously that sparked the conversation. So that was gratifying, just having those type of moments um, authentically with my wrestling friends in lieu to the success of the Black Family Feud event at Black WrestleFest Juneteenth weekend. So that's been gratifying, those type of moments, those type of efforts, you know, those type of outcomes. I can't put a price on that. Are you still accepting vendors or sponsors? And where can people buy their tickets? Yes. So we are still accepting uh, vendors and sponsors. We'll probably be accepting vendors and sponsors until I think the deadline that we discussed was June 15th, just because we know that there's a lot going on. People are having birthday parties. People's children are getting out of school. They're going to summer camp. You know, there's a lot going on right now. Plus, I mean, we're still at the heels of a global pandemic. So there are people still trying to recover. And I know that the pricing seems uh, a bit much, but things cost, right? And we're trying to do this. We're trying to provide an experience um, as cost effectively as possible, but to make sure that we have stuff for people to partake in. So for instance, WWE 2K22, there's going to be a video game tournament. So oh, like okay. in order to get those in order to get those consoles in, right? I had to pay, you know, a video gaming company to bring that in and they come with their monitors and their, their uh internet system. You know, it's like stuff that you have to pay for. And also just to keep in mind that's a minority owned business. We were very intentional with reaching out to the smaller businesses, but also, you know, minority owned businesses. That's one of the other things that you'll be able to enjoy if you attend Black WrestleFest. We are still accepting sponsorships and vendor applications up until June 15th. And you can actually, as just as an attendee or a patron, you can visit BlackWrestleFest.com and buy your tickets there. There are several levels. And the difference in the levels is kind of in the 
the narrative of the ticket. Um, but for the most part, I, I just want people to come out and enjoy and have a great weekend. And depending on the feedback, you know, and the reception in person, once the event is executed, we'll see what we can do about doing it again next year. Bigger goal is to do it in a different city. We did it in New York because it was here and, you know, we wanted the first one to be local because we know the area. We right. Know, I know, I know the fire department, I know the police, I know the mayor's office community board, um, the neighborhood, department of education. But next year, we don't mind taking it south or moving it west. We want to be able to do it again as long as it's a successful event and well-received and we can get the same support that we got this year. Thank you so much, Danielle, for joining me. I'm looking forward to keeping up with Black Wrestle Fest on Twitter and the other different social media platforms. Where can the people keep up if they are not able to make it or if they want to share their pictures and videos from the event? Yes, so everything can be posted on the social media platforms. Uh, I believe on Twitter, it's BLK Wrestle Fest. And on Instagram, it's full out, spelled out, Black Wrestle Fest. You can, you know, tag us. Um, hashtag Black Wrestle Fest will be trending. You know, we're going to make sure it trends. We're going to tell everybody or strongly encourage everyone to use it over that weekend. People who aren't able to attend, we're going to try to live stream some things. We'll see how that works. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. You can find all of our other episodes available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and wherever else you listen to your podcast. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST. Let us know what you thought about the episode. What was your favorite part? Until next time, enjoy your wine, and of course, enjoy your wrestling. Cheers! Cheers.